never touch the money system. Never touch the money system. You can touch everything else. You're invited to play a game. The rules seem simple, and the reward? It's the American dream, wealth, security, and freedom. But as you sit down, you start to notice the subtle hints that this game isn't quite what it seems. You're promised a fair shot. You're moving the goalposts on all fronts. But every time you make a move, the goalposts shift. By the end, it's clear. The game is rigged, and it's rigged against you. Money has a strange hold over us all. It buys us what we need, but it also binds us, trapping us in a system where true freedom is just out of reach. Let's go back to where it all began to understand how we ended up here. It's time to face the uncomfortable truth that is money might just be the biggest scam of all. But before we discuss how money made you fool, let's go back in a time when money didn't even exist. In the early days, bartering was the way to go. You had a cow, I had some grain, and we'd make a fair trade. Then came precious metals, like gold and silver, which had intrinsic value. They became the first forms of currency, backed by their actual worth. Money was simply a tool to make trading easier. But as society grew, carrying gold coins became impractical and paper money emerged. At first, these paper notes were just certificates that represented gold in a vault. There was a direct relationship between paper currency and real, tangible wealth. But that changed. In the 20th century, countries around the world abandoned the gold standard. Money was no longer tied to anything of real value. It became fiat currency. Fiat, a term derived from Latin, means let it be done. In other words, money has value because we're told it does. From that moment on, money was a construct, a symbol without substance, and the beginning of the scam as we know it. Then there came a time when central banks took over. With the power of money now entirely theoretical, enter the central banks, institutions like the Federal Reserve in the US. These banks don't hold your savings account. They don't give out mortgages or loans. No, they're in charge of the entire money supply. They decide how much money is printed, they set interest rates, and in essence, they control the economy. Here's a wild fact. The Federal Reserve isn't even part of the government. It's a privately owned entity that operates independently, making decisions with little oversight from elected officials. Now, you'd think an institution with so much power would be working for our best interests. But is it? Let's look at how the Federal Reserve responded to the 2008 financial crisis. The big banks had gambled with our money, making risky bets on the housing market. When those bets failed, the economy collapsed. Millions lost their homes and jobs. And yet, the Federal Reserve bailed out the banks that caused the crash, not the people affected by it. They use taxpayer money to rescue the very institutions that put us in that mess. And the worst part? No one went to jail. Now let's discuss about fiat system and inflation. That's the reason behind why your money is worth less each year. The fiat system is basically how our money works in the US. The dollar isn't backed by anything like gold anymore, but by the trust we have in the government. This can be a double-edged sword. On the one hand, it gives the Federal Reserve the flexibility to print more money when needed. But on the flip side, this can lead to inflation, which means your money slowly loses value over time. Take the 1970s, for example. After ditching the gold standard, inflation kicked in big time, fueled by all that money printing during the Vietnam War and those pesky oil shocks. Suddenly, people were paying way more for gas and groceries, and it hit hard. Fast forward to the COVID-19 pandemic, and the Fed threw tons of money into the economy to keep things afloat. Trillions of dollars through stimulus checks and low interest rates. Sounds good, right? But it also helped push inflation up to 9.1% in June 2022, the highest it's been in over 40 years. Now, everyday folks are feeling the pinch. Prices for essentials like rent, food, and gas have shot up, 
leaving many scrambling to make ends meet. So while the fiat system gives us some economic tools to play with, it also shows us just how vulnerable we are to inflation. It's a real challenge for anyone trying to save or plan for the future when the value of money keeps slipping away. Let's take example of stock market. We're told that the stock market is a way for everyone to invest, to grow their wealth, and to secure their future. But let's be real, it's more like a casino, one where the house always wins. The big players, hedge funds, institutional investors, and billionaires have insider knowledge and technology that give them a huge advantage over regular investors. Consider high-frequency trading. These are trades made in milliseconds, executed by powerful computers. Large firms spend millions on this technology, and they use it to make micro-profits on millions of transactions. You and I? We're left watching the numbers and hoping for the best. And when retail investors do get a lucky break, like in the GameStop saga of 2021, the system shuts them down. As soon as it became clear that ordinary people were winning, trading platforms restricted buying. It was a blatant reminder of who really controls the market. The game doesn't stop at the stock market. Debt is another tool that keeps us trapped. Mortgages, student loans, credit cards, they're all forms of modern day slavery. You work your whole life to pay off these debts, but by the time you're free, what do you have left? A lifetime of payments, interest, and stress. Let's take student loans, for example. You're told that going to college is the key to success, but by the time you graduate, you're buried under a mountain of debt that takes decades to pay off. And as you work to pay it back, you're less likely to take risks or pursue passions. You're stuck in a cycle of working just to pay the bank. Meanwhile, the government rakes in billions from student loan interest, money that could have gone toward your future. The same goes for mortgages. Home ownership is sold as the American dream, but it's more like a 30-year sentence. You pay double the cost of your home by the time you're done, thanks to interest. And if you miss a few payments, you can lose everything. The banks get their money, and you're left with nothing. Inflation is a word we hear all the time, but what does it really mean? In simple terms, it's when the price of goods goes up, but your money doesn't go as far. But inflation isn't some natural occurrence. It's often the result of the central banks printing more money. When more money is in circulation, it decreases in value. This invisible tax hits the poor and middle class the hardest. Think about it. The cost of living keeps rising, but wages don't keep up. Over time, your money buys less and less. So while we're told to save for retirement, inflation is quietly eroding our savings. It's like trying to fill a bucket with water while there's a hole at the bottom. And who benefits from inflation? Those who hold assets, stocks, real estate, and businesses. It's another way the rich get richer, while the rest of us are left behind. Let's talk about media that's manipulating us by selling the illusion of money. You might think the media is there to inform us, to help us make sense of the world. But let's not forget, they're owned by the very corporations and billionaires who benefit from the current system. The stories we see on TV are carefully crafted narratives that maintain the status quo. We're shown images of success and luxury, encouraging us to aspire to a lifestyle that's out of reach for most. But what they don't show us are the tax havens, the offshore accounts, and the lobbying that ensures the rich stay rich. The media sells us the illusion that anyone can make it if they just work hard enough. But they ignore the systemic barriers that keep us from getting ahead. We see glamorous lifestyles and are told that if we just invest wisely, save diligently, and work tirelessly, we too can achieve wealth. But the reality is far more complex and far less fair. Now, you might be thinking, what can I do? The first step is to see the game for what it is. Understand that the system wasn't built for you to win. It was built to keep you in line. 
but there's power in knowledge. You can start by learning about personal finance, by educating yourself about investments, and by building real assets. Consider assets that generate passive income or protect your wealth from inflation, like real estate or precious metals. And most importantly, question everything. Don't accept things at face value. Just because we're told we need to live a certain way, working 40 hours a week, buying a house, taking on debt, doesn't mean it's the only way. The biggest scam of all isn't money itself. It's the belief that we're powerless. But here's the truth. The system only works as long as we play along. When you start questioning, learning, and taking control, you can break free from the constraints. Maybe that means living frugally, avoiding debt, or investing in unconventional assets. So, are you going to keep playing their game, or will you start writing your own rules? The choice is yours. It's time to take back control, to see the truth for what it is, and to stop being a pawn in someone else's game. This is your life, your money, and ultimately, your power.